guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the idea of compressible flow. So there's a couple of different conditions that we're going to discuss when we are mentioning the idea of the compressible flow. Now the first one is the isothermal conditions. Now isothermal conditions can be maintained only when there is very good heat transfer to the surroundings and normally only exists with low flow rates in small pieces of equipment. Because in order to achieve isothermal conditions, the influence that the external environment has can have an impact on how well it can be controlled. Now, at the opposite end, then what we would say for larger installations with high flow rates, then the conditions would be almost adiabatic. So, if we have low flow rates and small equipment, we can assume isothermal conditions. If we have large pieces of equipment and high flow rates, we can assume adiabatic conditions. Now, except for the isothermal flow, the relationship between the pressure and the density will be influenced by the way in which the change is caused. So what we mean by this is the degree of reversibility. So if a system can be reversed, then the relationship between the pressure and the density will be different from that if it was irreversible. Because an irreversible change would suggest that the conditions can no, will be different to the end point than it was at the beginning. So we need to use a different relationship. Now if we consider here, we're only going to talk about the, the, the gases when we talk about compressible flow. But you can have um, non-Newtonian fluids that are uh, susceptible to compressibility, but here we're just going to consider gases through orifices, nozzles and pipelines. Now within each of these uh, cases, we have what's known as a maximum value, which is independent of the downstream pressure. So up to a certain value of the flow rate, the pressure the influence that the pressure will have is negligible. After we reach the maximum value, then this becomes dependent on the pressure of the system. And this phenomenon is what is known as not to arise with incompressible fluids. So this only applies to compressible fluids. Now, the compressibility is a measurement described of the deviation of the behaviour of a real gas from an ideal one. And what we can express this as is the compressibility factor Z. Now, this is in terms of an ideal gas. So, Z is equal to the pressure of the system, the volume, divided by the moles, multiplied by the universal gas constant, multiplied by the temperature of the system. Now, a very practical example would be in terms of, say, for instance, you're looking at a compressed vessel of CO2. Then usually the manufacturer will give you the mass. So say, for instance, here, a standard mass for a cylinder of CO2 was around 34 kilograms. Now, we want to know what the volume of the gas is. Now, typically what people tend to do is they take the mass and then they take the density of the system and they can work out the volume. Because remember, your density would be meters cubed per kilogram. So what people would do is times by the mass and that would give them the volume. However, this isn't the case because the, the CO2 or the gas has been compressed. So we need to know the compressibility factor first before we can rearrange this equation in order to find the volume. Now the values of Z for gases are determined experimentally and as such there are a series of compressibility charts available. Now, we have several different references on thermodynamics and fluid flow in our online resource library, so be sure to check that one out, and you can get all your relevant values and data from those charts. This is, makes life a lot easier when you come to finding and sourcing key pieces of data needed for your problems. Now, another couple of types of compression that we need to discuss here when we talk about compression cycles. 
Now the first one is the isothermal compression system. And this means that the temperature will remain constant as the pressure is either increased or decreased. And this would therefore require for isothermal compression the continuous removal or addition of heat depending on the system. And it's given by this expression here. Now, for those of you that have um, done our heat transfer course, our thermodynamics and fluid mechanics courses, you will be familiar with these relationships. This one is whereby we fix the temperature so we can relate the pressure in the volume at point one with the pressure in volume at point two. Now the other type of compression is known as isentropic. Now isentropic compression is the adiabatic or reversible form of the compression with no addition of heat or removal. So it follows the same principle, but because we don't have the addition or removal of heat and the system is reversible, we then introduce this new parameter gamma. So we have P1V1 is equal to P2V2, but the volumes are to the power gamma. Now gamma is expressed as CP over CV, so it's the rate relationships between the specific heat capacities. Now this is of course dependent on your fluid. So gamma can be found through published data for the values of CP and CV. Now that's all very well and good. However, the last one that we're going to look at is for a more true to life type of system. So if you want as accurate a value as possible, then the, the isentropic approximation wouldn't strictly be true because there will always be a degree of irreversibility within the system. So what we then do is we use this expression for the polytropic compression relation. So here, the expression is very, very similar. It's still P1V1 equals P2V2. But this time, instead of to the power gamma, we now have to the power K. And K can only be determined experimentally. So gamma was a function of published fixed data on your fluid. Whereas K, because every system will will operate slightly differently, K will be dependent on your experiments that you carry out using your specific parameters and conditions. But remember that the temperature throughout all of these different types of cycles is always fixed. That's why we can relate P1 and V1 to P2 and V2. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the idea of compressible flow and compressibility. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.